everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is Madden 17 on EA Sports. With a spot in the Super Bowl on the line, everything is on the line in today's conference championship matchup. It's the Colts going up against the Browns. With that, let's get up to Cleveland. We're standing by our Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Just off the shores of Lake Erie, we are at First Energy Stadium in a city aptly named after its founder, Moses Cleveland, way back in 1796. Straight ahead, it's a clash to decide the AFC's representative in the Super Bowl. And it'll be a great one between the Indianapolis Colts and the Cleveland Browns. Hello, everyone. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The postseason continuing here on EA Sports. And, man, it is electric in here, and it should be conference championship time. I don't know about you, but my butterflies in my stomach, they have iron wings in this one. <laughs> and every guy I've ever talked to has all said the same thing. This game, the conference championship game, may have more intensity than even the Super Bowl because you know what the stakes are. You're trying so hard to get to the big game that this is the this is the one that's the real challenge. The winner here goes to the Super Bowl and we'll know soon enough which team that'll be as we are underway in the AFC title game. This one fielded at the five. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25 yard line. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. And they'll be let out by their quarterback, the very, very talented Andrew Luck. And Andrew Luck's skill set is absolutely fantastic. There's not anything that he can't do as a quarterback on the field. But I also think that he absorbed a little bit by osmosis. Some of that great bloodline. His father, formerly a quarterback in the NFL as well. A handoff as they run the counter play. And he is going to lose yardage here. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. They tried to run the counter, just that the defense wasn't fooled. And when they're not fooled, you see the end result. Because what you're doing there, you mentioned the counter. You're using your offensive linemen sometimes to pull or move to influence the defensive front to go in that direction and create the space back in the other side and block it appropriately. But you're exactly right. Didn't move him. Sat there waiting for him and made the play. Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. From the gun on third down, Luck. Under pressure and down he goes. Luck is sacked. And the defense coming through on third down. A loss of seven to bring up four. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. The Colts send out their punter. He'll kick it away after a three and out on the opening drive of the game. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. This is taken around the 12. Oh, what a move. A terrific return. 30 yards all in all. And the Browns will take over first and 10. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. And out will come the leader of this offense. And that, of course, is their signal caller. Set. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. And the quarterback, he's got some big threats at wideout. And they seem to get bigger all the time, don't they, Brandon? Every time I look out and watch a game, we're getting these bigger, more athletic, acrobatic receivers. We have some today. Second down following the run. All right, here we go. Back to throw here. And he's got his man on the out route. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. 
And it's possible that today the most important group could be the linebackers. Yeah, the second level, as we like to call them, right? Defensive front has to control things, but the linebackers, they do more than clean up. They help create big plays. Short of the sticks after that completion, and now it's third down for this offense. He'll look to throw, and he will find his man on the outside. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. A short game that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. Now a high kick, almost a pooch punt. Fair catch called for in May, but now we'll have to see about the penalty. Kick catch interference. Kicking team. And the returner has that invisible shield around him. He deserves that space. Didn't have it there. That's why the penalty comes out. Awareness goes on both sides of the ball. The guys chasing it down have to know whether the ball is going to be caught, fair caught, whatever, so they don't contact the punt returner. Gun. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And here's the offense today that hopes to get off to a strong start. So the offense looking at a second and eight. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. Here's Luck now on second down. He rifles one that's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And they take over. They'll set up shop at the 46-yard line. Well, this win is definitely going to be a factor as this game goes along. He's throwing straight into it here in the first quarter, and the ball fluttered on him a little bit. But they'll have to file that one away and make a mental note of it. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And last time they were very fortunate this offense. They went for it on four, turned it over in their own territory, but the other guys held up. They didn't give up any points. So how about the guy with the number one headset on the sidelines, the head coach? That was planned going into it, not necessarily to not get the first down or to, to have the defense have to hold But he up. trusted his defense. Trusted his defense very much, and I think that that's how he's going to play this game. Go for it. Be aggressive because I've got the wild bunch backing me up over here on my own side. Now let's we'll see what his offense can do. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Good use of the pass there to pick up the first down against a defensive look that they had specifically prepared for, they told us, coming into this one. Certainly seems like they're holding all the right cards now, doesn't it? Because of their preparation. Went back, watched the tape, studied the tendencies, and they felt like they had them down cold, and they were able to use the... And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Their dangerous wide receiver from three yards out, and the Browns have taken the early lead. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. As we get a look at the defensive starters, the secondary, they're certainly going to need to be on their toes in this one. And you know me really well. 
where do I start analyzing a game? From the secondary. And these guys have to be on point today. They're facing a high-powered attack. They'll come out in the pistol. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. Defense looking to hold serve one last time here on third and seven. Throwing on third down, Luck. Now a hit, and Luck lost the football. It's out, and his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. Thank goodness for heaters up here, and thank goodness I don't have to carry the football in this game. It's January. It's cold out there. Trying to clutch the football and absorb the hits, not easily done. And yeah, we saw a product of the elements right there. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. But that kind of run on first down, that's a winning type of a run. That just sets things up for them moving forward as they begin the drive. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And this is caught. I think he got that with one hand. Pass interference. Defense. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll come out in the pistol. First and goal here from the nine. And he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle, keep coming after them, put the pressure on them. And on the ground they go with the running back. And he gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here, brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. So now the Browns will turn it over to their field goal unit here. From the left hand, should be a fairly easy one here. And his kick is good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So put three on the board, but from inside the five. I know we use this phrase a lot, but that's a big time win for the defense. It sure is. You've got the short field behind you, so you can afford to turn up the pressure. And that was a nice sequence there to keep them out of the end zone. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. We get a glance at the Browns' defense as they file into position. Forced the fumble last time. Now two turnovers that they forced here in this first half, Charles. And this defense has set the tone for the game. Taking it away twice here in the first half of the game, that's going to make the offense so uncomfortable the rest of the game and really make them focus on ball security. Sometimes that cuts down your ability to make big plays. The offense will try to prove you wrong here. They'll try to find that comfort. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. The insistence of speed at every position is really seen at the defensive end spot. These guys in the old days were often outside linebackers. They just pushed them forward because they wanted to play fast and get to the quarterback or the running backs quicker than ever before. Here's Luck, and he'll go out of bounds across the 35-yard line. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, minicamp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. So we play the quarter here in the AFC Championship game. 10 zip our score. We'll return after this message. You're watching the NFL, and it's right here on EA Sports.
back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. The Colts in possession of the football to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. They come out here in the eye. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he stopped immediately there. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. We just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game, really at the point of attack. The offensive line is just getting pushed around. I think now as a play caller, you've got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe you keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking. But you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Surveying the field, finding a safety valve here. That's complete. They convert on third with a gain of 22. In the completion, nice throw, nice catch, but Charles, big thanks goes to the men up front. They allowed the quarterback to throw out of the rocking chair, so to speak. Plenty of time to survey the field and find an open man. Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. False start, offense. Here we go on first and 15. Throwing his lock. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Again, Luck. He's got time in the pocket. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Again is locked. And he comes back with one complete. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it. Now the confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football. But you do say, guess what? We can throw it. We can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. They come out here in the eye. And they'll go on the ground. And he's got four down inside the 20 to the 18. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yard. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver from 17 yards out. And the Colts have got it back to a one-score game. Partner, remember that old film of Peyton Manning going through the route tree with his great receivers in Indianapolis? I think we're seeing the results of the same type of work here today. These guys know each other so well that they don't even have to call the play. They can just look each other and know the route that's going to be run, and usually the connection is perfect. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. So that one a long 11-play drive. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. Go, go, go. 
Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This one taken just inside the 10. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. And the Browns getting set to go. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point? The kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that hey, offense, the they're thinking, let's the get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that <laughs> helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe <laughs> Super toe. It's a six yard pickup and it gets him to second and four. Well they certainly got dented with that first down run so now they've got to be back on their heels a little bit as a defense. Four yards remaining now on second down. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Firing quickly here and that's complete. A gain of four on the play and they'll be faced with a third and inches. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards it. And they'll run it here. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And that's the type of play that'll fire up the defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all, or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Throwing right, and that's complete. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. And now we're circling here around the two-minute warning. This is a setup play, trying to get one last one in before the clock warning. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. And time for us to take a break here in the booth back with more of the AFC Championship game after this. A reminder, as we did all through the regular season, we'll check in with Larry Ridley at halftime. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half of play. A little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. They overload him that time with a safety blitz, and he winds up being dropped for a loss of seven. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. And their inaugural sack of the game coming from an unlikely source. You mean it wasn't a linebacker? It wasn't a defensive end? It was somebody. And now here's a timeout called by the Colts on the defensive side of the ball. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the last time out. They feel good about themselves. They feel like their game plan is now in effect. They know how to attack and what plays they want to put together. But they've got to keep it moving in the right direction because, as you did note, they are down on the scoreboard. The throw on second down is locked. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. 
Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. And quickly, they get to the line. They go play action here on first down. And that's caught inside the 35. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. On first down, it's long. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. It's always tough trying to keep your guy upright when he's trying to throw the football. When you're dealing with those big, bad guys on the defensive front, it's even tougher. And this time, those guys on the opposite side won the battle, getting to the quarterback and knocking him into an incompletion. Backing up, going to throw deep for the end zone. And he's got his target. It's caught for a Colts touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Colts have taken the lead. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. Now the point after try for Santos. And that makes it 14-10. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned they're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. We're looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Now a play fake here on first down. He's got his tight end on the corner route. It's complete. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So as they take it over, we step aside. And he's going to miss this one. That is no good. Well outside the left upright. So we come upon halftime in the AFC title game as we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. So let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. Colts have it midway through the first. Here the defense will come up with the pick. Brown's defense gets off the field with the turnover. Offense on the field now after the INT. Here the pass is completed into coverage, and it leads to a touchdown. They strike first in the half. Colts line up at the 18. Locks on point with the throw, and he kept off the long drive with the TD. Cutting the deficit to three. Colts lined up at the 28. Wide open catch will be made on the deep pass. And this will go all the way for a touchdown. They're now on top by four. Just about out of time in the first half. Nice work to make the catch in double coverage. And he'll end up at the 45-yard line before being tackled. So that's all for us here at the EA Sports Studio. We'll get you back out to the field now for some more playoff action. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Personal foul, face mask, defense. 
face mask penalty and Charles you were a defender you know sometimes in the heat of the moment it's hard to keep your hands away from that face mask sometimes you just get out of position as a defender when you're trying to make a tackle so you end up flailing away and your hand gets into the wrong spot and look out I think he's gonna go and all the way in touchdown Cleveland a great play there 61 yards and once again the Browns are back in front I know we don't talk about it enough but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking the offensive linemen maybe the smartest guys in football overall Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Now for the point after. It's good, and they'll take a 17-14 lead. So they hit pay dirt on just one play. The long run, the scamper, and a very nice scamper into the end zone for the touchdown. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This one fielded at the five. Muscles him off. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. They come up in an offset eye. Here's Luck now on second down. And a hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Looked like they had an opportunity for a big play across the middle, but he didn't have the concentration or the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. Incomplete pass on second down. Let's see what the offense draws up here on third. Again, we'll see the pistol here. Throwing on third down, Lock. And he's got it. Got his man on the end round. Complete. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. On first down, Lock. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Second down now after the pass completion. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. Luck throwing again. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Now a handoff here to his running back. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. The big man. Get the oxygen tank ready. To the end zone. It's a fumble return for a Browns TD. This was a close game. They needed a little breathing room where they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave him a comfortable lead.
Now the extra point try forthcoming. And it's no good. Oh, he misses the extra point. And our score stays right where it is. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This one fielded at the five. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And now the Browns' defensive unit trots back out. They come out here in the eye. On first and ten, Locke. Deep drop. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. It's interesting because when I'm watching college football and I'm evaluating guys for the draft now, my list of fullbacks, pure fullbacks, it's a very short list. I'm probably evaluating more punters and kickers now than I am fullbacks, but it doesn't matter what you call the position, it's who you put there, and there we saw a completion. Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. Second down, here's Lock. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. Now the offense lining up first and 10. Now a first down throw, Lock. And a quick throw here, that's complete. That throw good for four. It's second down. But well, there wasn't much there with that hitch route. They didn't gain what they expected. But sometimes when you call a hitch, you really don't have an alternate to go to. You don't have a second route to throw it to. So sometimes you have to rifle in there and hope for the best. Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. Offense. And the offense behind the chains here a touch on second and 11. To the air again, Lock. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. It's a gain of seven, and that'll lead here to a third down. So here we go, a third down after the second down pass completion. And when you have a guy in the backfield who can catch the football, you don't just use him strictly for check downs or dump offs. You make him part of the primary passing attack because what you're trying to do is get him into open field and then let him make people miss and advance the football. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. Call it a one-yard gain of the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. And Santos able to put this one up and through. It's good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So he splits the uprights there, and I would imagine it's nice as a kicker. Right when it leaves your foot, you know it's good. Yeah, it's kind of like a golfer that picks up his tee after a nice drive without even watching it land. Solid analogy. I like it. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. <laughs> and he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. And here are the Browns now as the offense comes back out onto the field. And coming off a one-play drive that was so deflating for the defense, what, what's their mentality? How do they rally here and stop this offense? Well, hopefully there's some determination that sets in because I, they weren't ready to go on the last one. Give all the credit to the offensive guys for getting it done, but to allow a run of that length, that's just not being prepared. So now, are they determined? Are they ready to read their keys and make the proper plays? And we'll see how determined they are. And he's got his man on the out route. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 
That one goes for 13 yards and it moves the sticks. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Here we go now. They go play action here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. That one will set him back nearly 10 yards here on first down on the sack. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Third down, the Colts beefing up the secondary. Six defensive backs in the game. And he is going to lose yardage here. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. The Browns send out their punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. It's not always as trite as that team wanted it more than the other, but on that play, it actually was true. They were faster to the ball. This is taken at the 15. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. To throw on second down is locked. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Another pistol look here. From the gun on third down, Luck. And this is going to be incomplete. Holding offense. One quarter remains until we crown the AFC champion. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Colts, so they've got the football, but they've got work to do trailing here as we begin the fourth quarter. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Third and long, it's Locke. And this time he's got the hookup, it's complete. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. Ball start, offense. First and 15 here behind the chains. It's a five receiver set, three to the left, two to the right. From the gun, here's Long. Wide open receiver complete. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. So the offense has it first and 10. On first down, it's Long. Finding time. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Luck throwing again. And his 
throw is going to be incomplete. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. Off of play action, Luck. And he comes back with one complete. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. And when an offense is doing a nice job selling the play action pass, a lot of responsibility shifts to the linebackers. They're the ones that have to determine run or pass and get to the proper places on the field. Quick hitter here, it's complete. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Again, Luck. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Third and two, Luck. And he will find his man on the end route. Complete. And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. Well, they were in the red zone, and they needed a first down. Was it a surprise to you that they went to the tight end? Not at all. I thought, though, the defense might... And now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. He'll give it to him right up the gut. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something that develops slowly. It's got and he takes it in for a Colt score. A great effort there. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Colts can now take the lead if they convert the extra point. Able to punch it in on third down makes it easier for those guys on the sideline. They didn't have a fourth down decision to make. Yeah, could you feel the exhale? Because they were already thinking ahead as all the good coaching staffs do. Anticipating, will we have to make the call? They already had it lined up, never even got to it. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And these numbers showing up on the screen, that's why he's their star. They kept him down for a little bit, couldn't keep him down for a full four quarters. But what they were hoping for was a half of the game. And if they could have shut it down at the half, they had done their job. But as you mentioned, a full four quarters and the best, they always feel like they're one run away from changing the momentum or breaking something big. And we're starting to see that here in the second half. All right, here we go. Green! The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Blitz coming, and down he goes. They'll wind up losing 10 on the sack, and it'll lead to a third and long. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye. That happened fast and a big sack. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. He'll drop to throw. Going right side here, and that's complete. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. Time for a break. Back to wrap up the AFC Championship game after this. And it all rides on this one play, a trip to the Super Bowl in the balance here on fourth down. They'll set up to throw. He's got time. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. It'll be a gain of 24 on the play. And on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. 
And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator is looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. They did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way, so he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it, just move on to the next play. Back to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Now that was well defended, and as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking. That was a really nice play there. Now with just one second showing on the play clock, we're going to get a timeout. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. And now here's a timeout called by the Colts on the defensive side of the ball. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. And Charles, you talk about a big kick under pressure in the fourth quarter. That wasn't like a 33-yarder. That was a long-distance kick. Brandon, it shows you the faith that this coaching staff has in their kicker. You're right. If this goes wrong, you're going to give up the ball near midfield. But that was an absolute rainmaker, and it's going to give them a late lead. He's back to throw. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. Back to throw. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. So a second down incompletion now brings up third down. They'll look to throw. It's caught at the 10. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A big play there with one second remaining. And the Colts have taken the lead here in the fourth. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Yeah, I know only one of them counts, but this one looks like it's going to lead to a victory. I know we're not supposed to count anyone out, but with that little bit of time left on the clock, it'd take almost a miracle for them to lose this one. It would, and I, this is going to sound cliche. It's been such a great game. You just hate to see one side lose, but hey, they earned it. And it's up and good. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is taken near the 13. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. So some drama down to the very end of this ballgame, Charles, on that final kickoff. They were hoping to break free, some sort of miracle play, but they couldn't do it. They had a chance, and that was their only opportunity to try and bring it all the way back. As you noted, they weren't able to get that done, but at least they had the shot. What a tremendous game to be this close and this well contested.
And that'll close the books on the conference championship. For Charles Davis, myself, Brandon Gordon, and our entire crew, we'll talk to you in two weeks from the Super Bowl.